So my name is, is Toby Benham and I'm going to be talking to you today about a career in regulatory affairs and what that means. So as part of the talk I'd, I'd give a quick background on myself um, and kind of the, the journey that I've taken to where I am today. Talk to you a bit about what regulatory affairs is. Is it something which you may or may not have heard of um, uh, but it kind of includes a wide array of, um, of different fields. Talk to you about what my job involves. Um, then talk about opportunities and career path. So the ways into the field and then where you may want to go and the different routes within regulatory. Um, and then towards the end, I just also want to talk about something slightly different about um, how to make decisions uh, within um, within your career, within your um, sort of higher education as well. So how you decide what subjects to take and um, and what to do after education as well. OK, so heading straight into it then. So my um, my background in terms of study, I um, did A levels in chemistry, biology, maths and, and further math. So I, I knew that I really liked sciences and I really enjoyed math and that's the kind of thing that I wanted to go into but I really had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I, I didn't really have great careers advice on the different uh, options that were open to me. I, I didn't really know that many people that worked in STEM careers so I didn't have that many people to go to for advice so I was just trying to find out as much as I could and I knew that I enjoyed those subjects and, and wanted to do something around that area moving forwards. Um, so uh, I then decided to take chemistry at, at Bristol University. Um, for me, this was something which was um, I, I enjoyed. Probably one of my favourite ones. I really liked my teacher, and it was uh, kind of like the it's often seen as the middle science, so it has a bit of everything. And I did an industrial placement year for a pharmaceutical company. So this is something I would I would really recommend if you if you look into and if you get the chance when when you're starting to think about um, further education or looking into that. There's a lot of courses out there which offer, as well as the study, then a year working for for a company, which is a great chance to get experience. And I certainly learned a lot doing that about what I wanted to do. And then since that time um, and, and since university, so for the last five or six years, I've been working in something called FMCG. That stands for Fast Moving Consumer Goods. Um, so I've worked on all of these types of products that you're seeing on the screen now. I previously worked for for Kimberly Clark, um, so makers of products like Huggies baby wipes, Kleenex products, Andrex, so lots of lots of tissues and consumer goods and and wipes and and a whole a whole range of different products there. Um, and I, I currently work for for PepsiCo, um, and I'm the the chemical safety team lead there, and work on shipping out concentrate products to partners in countries all over the world. Um, so following rules and regulations there on sending our products out to to many um, different countries. And the the main kind of emphasis that I'm looking at when I'm talking about developing these products and the bit that I actually contribute is making sure that they are uh, safe and legal and compliant. Um, so in a moment I'll talk to you more about what that actually means and the involvement that I, I get. But I really enjoy working in, in consumer goods and developing these types of products because it's it's really satisfying once you see them come out on the shelves and you know that you've been a part of, of making those products get to the market. So it's it's definitely interesting and, and very varied. But before I do that, I just wanted to ask a question about what, what do you think a scientist looks like? Because when I was in, in school, you know, I certainly remember thinking, I really enjoyed science, I really enjoyed maths, but you know, I, I didn't perhaps enjoy doing practicals as much and I didn't see myself being like a, a crazy scientist in a lab and that was the idea that I had that if I wanted to be a scientist that I was going to have to look something like this image on the screen. Um, you know, that's, that certainly wasn't really me, um, but the, one of the messages I'd like to sort of for you to take away is that actually there are lots of jobs out there where you don't have to, you know, maybe you're interested in science, but you don't want to be working in a lab or doing, you know, if you're not enjoying your practical sessions as much, perhaps, but perhaps you still really love the, the content, um, then there are jobs such as what I do, toxicology, uh, medical writing, 
being a patent attorney or working in consultancy, um, there's certainly options out there. So just because perhaps you know some of the you don't necessarily see a route um, out there, I would definitely encourage you to um, look into what's possible um, and ask lots of questions because you know this this really is a stereotype and um, be careful in sort of um, realizing that because it took me a while to appreciate. So just a consideration. I'm getting back to the topic of regulatory affairs. I put this definition on here that I found from um, the Topra website, which is a, a regulatory association. Uh, they define the possession, uh, the profession, sorry, as um, the desire of governments to protect public health, um, controlling safety and efficacy of products. So there's a, a list of products put there. Um, and also the companies responsible um, and all, all different stages. So looking at discovery, testing, manufacture, marketing of these products. But the key thing there is to ensure that the supply uh, is safe and contributes to public health. So what does what does all of that really mean? Um, I've tried to boil it down to a few key points. Um, so regulatory affairs is trying to make sure that products that you might see on the shelf, um, like I've indicated before, so whether that be your um, your wipes or your sun cream or your food and your drink or your medicine, making sure that they're safe um, and that they work properly, making sure that they're legal, they follow all of the rules and the regulations. Um, and then also another part to all of this is to make sure that they are uh, protecting the environment as well. So there's a lot of rules and regulations out there which are set up to make sure that um, we're not only looking after human health, but also if, if those products then end up going down the sink, um, going into the waterways, that we're also protecting our um, um, environment as well. So I think that's a, a key thing to mention. Um, so if there's any more, um, I'm happy to take questions as we go, but I'm also um, more willing to talk about what that actually means towards the end, because I appreciate it's it's a little bit complicated. And so I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that's what I do, and it might might clear up somewhat as well. Um, so, in terms of the the field and where it's going, I think it's important to note that actually this is um this is a growing area. So, regulatory affairs, as it's called, as as a discipline, really was um, in its infancy maybe 20, 30 years ago. Uh, and it's it's really in in the sort of last 10 or 20 years that it's been growing and growing. Um, because countries and governments have been putting out more rules and regulations on on launching products. So don't worry too much about following this graph, but it, it's it's supposed to just show, uh, this is a, a graph for, for Europe showing the number of directives which have been increasing um, since the 1970s and it's going up. So what this means is that there's more and more things to take into consideration and the, it's becoming a lot more complicated to launch those products. So there's there's more emphasis on safety. And this isn't just for for us in the UK. It's not just about um, Europe either. It's it's globally. So there's there's many different countries out there um, all doing uh, slightly different things. And it creates a complicated world for businesses which want to launch products in in many different countries. Um, so it, it really does provide um, a lot of demand for going into uh, a, a career in regulatory affairs. There's a lot of job security. It keeps things interesting. There's a lot of new challenges um, and it means that you get to, to work on, on new, ex uh, new things all the time um, and consider different countries all over the world. So one thing that I enjoy is I get to work with a lot of different people because it's it's so um, so wide. Um, so as part of that, there's there's a lot of things that my my job then um, involves. And I think the best way to describe what I do is kind of a combination of science and business and health and safety. So, like I said at the start, I, I knew I wanted to do something technical and sciencey, but I, I didn't, you know, didn't really want to be someone perhaps working um, in a lab all the time or doing lots of practical work. But I, I wanted to make sure I was doing something that was still related back to that that technical discipline, and that I was using my skills that I'd learned from my studies. 
Um, so just just to talk you through some of the the bits in in more detail as a as a quick overview of of some of the areas I focus on. Number one, there I've put assessing ingredients. So there are um, countries often put out rules for the types of ingredients that you can use in certain products. So let's say that we're launching a uh, take like a baby wipe or a sun cream, for example, like a cosmetic product, then there are limits for some of those ingredients and it has to be assessed for safety. Um, and so that's that's one area looking at the classification of a product and the ingredients to make sure they're not over certain um, limits. The, the second one there is about reviewing claims and labels. So if we wanted to make a claim on a product, for example, that it was um, soothing or that it was good for your skin, then that's something which has to be substantiated so that otherwise companies don't make wild claims about all types of products that they can do anything. Um, so there, there are rules out there to make sure that you're falling into the right categories um, and that you're able to uh, launch a product appropriately. And that's a big part of um, for, for any business, making sure that their claims are, are in line while still being um, ambitious. The third one there, shipping hazardous material. Um, this is a lot of what I do at the moment. So let's say that um, we have a product, but it's flammable. And, you know, this could be anything from a, a hand sanitizer or um, perfume, uh, anything along those lines that, that that could be a flammable liquid. So if we're if we're then shipping that product from, let's say, the UK to or, or maybe it's coming from China to the UK, um, we have to make sure that that is shipped safely. And there's a lot of things that have to take place, getting um, the right assessment and documentation in place to make sure that's done. And someone with a, a scientific background has to basically do that work to make sure that all of the hazards have been taken into account to determine that it's flammable. Um, and therefore, what do we need to do to um, really um, engage with that and, and make sure that it's OK? The next one I put um, arranging testing. So again, let's say that there could be a cream which is going on the market and they want to say that it's um, want to make sure that it's not going to irritate the skin. So my job could involve making sure that we do testing as a company to make sure that that is not going to irritate the skin and so that we we make sure we're protecting our consumers and we're able to um, meet their needs. Uh, make our customers happy and also make sure that we're um, able to protect the reputation of the business. The the fifth one there is about registrations and notifications. So I, I won't talk too much about that. So it's um, again, there's a lot of detail behind that one, but essentially there are different protocols out there. Different countries have for using certain chemicals that have to be registered and notified. Um, so there's a lot of work in improving, providing dossiers doing a lot of technical work to assess chemicals, um, look at all of their characteristics to determine, you know, are they explosive? Are they flammable? Are they corrosive? Are they um, skin irritant or eye irritant? And uh, what effect do they have on the environment? And then um, there may be a requirement to then do all of that and then register um, as, as part of all of the chemical regulations. And to do all of these things that I've mentioned, then there's a heavy amount of researching. So one thing that I really enjoy, um, especially with a sort of scientific background uh, and using those skills is to to use those skills in researching, uh, looking into perhaps the tox of certain chemicals or um, researching regulations and, and using using those skills of attention to detail. And the final one there is is about trade associations and lobbying. So some of the work that I'm involved in means that I have to work with people doing this similar job to me in other companies where we have a common goal. So perhaps this could be around um, uh, something like Brexit, which happens and it brings about big challenges to companies on how they can manage all of the challenges which will be um, coming into place, um, working together and then lobbying governments to try and um, work in the interests of certain companies to, to um, improve business and really look out for uh, long term consumer health as well. A big part of what I do is, is then hazard communication. So as as part of what I've already mentioned is um, reviewing ingredients um, 
and I produce a document called a safety data sheet, um, which looks at basically compiling all of those hazards and putting them into, into a document and then using that for a label and product. So if we had perhaps a, um, a hand sanitizer or a deodorant, then you may recognize some of these symbols that you've seen or, or something like bleach, for example, you might have seen these products at home and you might have seen these um, these, di these red diamonds on the package. So part of what I do is assessing the, the chemicals in products to work out what are the hazards there. Um, so that requires that science background um, to make sure that the products are safe. So for example, if we did have something which was going to be a corrosive like, like bleach or your oven cleaner, then this needs to be communicated to the customer to make sure that when they use that product, they're aware of the hazard and they can take the appropriate um, measures to mitigate any risk. So wearing gloves, for example, to protect the skin. And, and so this is a, a key part of um, really the sort of chemical legislation that's not just in, in the UK or Europe, but around the world. And there's a sort of global system for trying to um, communicate a lot of these hazards and uh, it, it's really kind of essential as a, as building blocks to for for many products that are out there. In terms of the um, different factors of my job that I enjoy and the kind of opportunities opportunities that are out there, one thing I'd say is I I get to work with a lot of people that I really enjoy. So uh, different people, not just in my company or in the industry, but also um, you know all over the world. So if a lot of companies these days are very international and so even if a company is based in UK or the US you know it, it could be wanting to launch a product in Southeast Asia or South America or Russia um, anywhere and so often I will be working with people in those countries and it's um, really enjoyable to to work with people from all different backgrounds and and um, different cultures uh, and experience that diversity Generally, there's um, good flexible working arrangements in, in regulatory affairs type jobs. Uh, so it is, it's usually a nine to five type situation, but most companies out there are uh, sort of in the situation that as long as you're getting the work done, you know, you can start early, you can start late. It's, it's usually very flexible and there's good salary expectations. As I mentioned, the, there's a lot of demand to this type of work. There's, there's always new regulations coming in and new challenges. So, and um, that means that it's people that have that experience are, are in demand and it's a highly sought after profession for for many companies. So it's a, it's a growing, growing field. Um, and as part of that, because it is so international and often looking at many different countries, then um, there's often opportunities to travel abroad. So um, perhaps not as much in, in the last year, while well, lots of people have been working from home and, and things have changed a lot. but Generally, um, there are a lot of opportunities to um, work in different countries or travel because you're working with so many different people. Um, and then within the, the field of regulatory affairs, I just wanted to highlight as well the, the kind of different avenues that you can go down um, as it is extremely, extremely broad. And, and the area that I focus on consumer goods, um, that, that covers sort of many different things. As I've, I've mentioned, it could be cosmetics, it could be biocide products, um, could just be general products uh, that you see on the shelf. There's, a, there's really a, a whole range or, or, you know, chemical products as well. Um, but then on, on a wider scope, you've got other things like food and drink. So, um, you know, especially for for some of those ones where they're going to be higher risk. So for, for things where you're uh, eating and drinking, you've got to make sure that you're protecting the consumer and that you're um, not poisoning anyone and, and that you're going to make sure that you're uh, that everyone's safe. So there's a lot of regulations in, in that that area. Um, and, and of course, for medicines and, and drugs and, and medical devices uh, in the field of energy, um, there's one there called agrochemicals. And, and really, that just means looking at um, chemicals which are uh, used as, as things like pesticides. 
so on in in farming to make sure that we can grow crops um, chemicals that are used there have to be regulated to make sure that that they're safe and that there's not going to be unwanted residue in food for example uh, and this all links into another related area which is quality assurance which is making sure that um, all of these things are followed and that the, the finished product meets certain quality standards and as well as factoring in all of these different kind of avenues which I, I think makes it very interesting that you can often you can switch between different fields and and work across you know a, a great variety something which is really important to me is is having um, a lot of variety in, in, in what I do but you can work for small and local firms um, large big companies like I currently work for um, PepsiCo as a, as, a, as a large multinational consultancies or or even government so that, that's an uh, kind of an, an overview of everything and, and here are just uh, quickly some of the uh, skills that, that might be relevant if you if you think you might have an interest in this kind of this kind of work so usually people going into uh, regulatory affairs would have a degree in, in a science related topic it's not always essential, but it's, it's an advantage. So it could be chemistry, biology, physics, pharmacy, or pharmacology, um, or something medical related. It's, it's, it's really quite broad, but it's just having that style of thinking where you've got attention to detail, problem solving, uh, good writing skills, uh, even negotiation skills. Um, and so you're able to keep up to date with, with current regulations um, and then writing reports and researching. Um, so that's that's really a, a sort of very quick overview of all of those and I'll, I'll be happy to take questions on, on any of those parts more in a minute but just before I finish I also just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, a broader topic which is in making decisions because I think especially at, at um, the point in in your life where you're thinking about what subjects you want to do at, at a level or at university or if you even want to go um, and then what career you want to do. Um, often there's there's too much choice. So something which I always think is a good thing to, to think about and fall back on is the um, jam jar experiment. Um, so this could, this could apply to really for, to anything. So picking subjects or um, um, trying to think about what you want to do for, for a job as well. Really, we have a paradox. There's so many things in life where there's just so much choice out there um, and actually the more choice we have sometimes the harder it is to make a decision and so there was a study done um, a while ago now on selling jam um, that was what they used as the, as the basis of the study and they they set up two um, two scenarios one with uh, where there were 24 choices and one where there were six jams and they wanted to see what affected the customer behavior and what they found was actually um, what they what they thought that I should say at the start is that there would be the more choice then it would lead to fulfilling more people and that there would therefore be more purchases they actually found the opposite that the fewer jams there were the um, the higher the number of purchases so really what that means and what the relevance to this is that by having fewer choices sometimes it actually makes things um, easier to make those decisions and to to find the right thing for you and the message I would say therefore is and something I've learned throughout my career is if, if you can start to narrow down your options and think about what you want to do um, then that can really help with making decisions so it's about picking your jam jars and how you go about this so I would say in terms of trying to narrow down those options and work out what you want to do Think about these sort of questions and try and really reflect on what it is that you enjoy, where you get energy, what would you miss if you weren't doing any more in terms of subjects and, and skills that you're using, what can you do that others uh, can't do maybe as easily and things that you just find you know that's that's no problem at all or you enjoy it, see it as a puzzle. Um, and I would really encourage you to uh, look at, at websites, course details, talk to people, get as much advice, ask lots of questions and and really explore and think about what you want to do, because it's um, has a lot of impact what you what you sort of do to start with as to as to where you go from there. Uh, so it's it's important to to try and pick your choices as wisely as possible 
and also give yourself options for um, for afterwards to go through. Thank you for listening, answer affairs or anything I've gone through today.